Oh, what's everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. The podcast inspiring young rock and metal fans to discover new music and feeling a desire to connect and find a place where they belong. Hey guys, I know what day it is. It's March 9th. Why do I know what day it is? Because tomorrow, the band that's on the podcast today has their brand new cell tale album coming out. Ooh, yeah. And you know it's going to be a good one when we talk about connecting with the fans in a sound that is much more evolved than what they previously had done. Yes, that is right. But before we go into this podcast, I want to thank our sponsor, which is Phoenix Fitness. So, yes, you guys know I love, 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 love going to concerts. It's one of my favorite things to do, that in podcasting, of course. And what's my favorite thing to do to go to a concert? Is going into those mosh pits, baby. Going in from the beginning of the first band to the end of the last band and not taking any breaks in between. So, I got to stay in a certain shape, right? And I call it mosh pit fit. So what's it like to be mosh pit fit? Well, you got to be able to go to the gym a lot and you have to be able to, you know, do a lot of cardio and weightlift a lot so you can take those hits, you can deliver those hits, but at the same time, continue to have the endurance and go the distance. And that's my fitness goal. Your fitness goal might be something different to fit in that mosh pit fit category, but that's what we do. But we also make sure we're preparing and recovering right in order to make sure our bodies are at the most optimal point in time to stay mosh pit fit. Because let me tell you, if I wasn't recovered right and preparing right, by the time I got on those mosh pits, I'd be like, you know, ah, I can't do this, Mabel, I'm done. So that's where Phoenix Fitness comes in. They have many different types of supplements to help you prepare and recover right to keep up with your fitness goals. They have different types of pre-workouts, both stim and stim-free. I use the stim-free stuff because woo, I don't need any more energy than I already have. They have beast of the recovery compounds to help your muscles absorb the nutrients after a workout. They have different types of creatine to help you build muscle, types of protein with collagen protein, plant-based protein, whey protein. I use their whey protein chocolate malt flavor because yummy, yummy to my tummies. They also have different types of multivitamins and literally anything you might need to your fitness goals, Phoenix Fitness has for you. So our listeners and viewers of the podcast, Get 20% off the user code CPP20 at the link in the description of the podcast. Thank you, Phoenix Fitness. But now it's time for a feature presentation from the road with Gideon. Yeah, they're on the road with Gideon right now. It is Chad from For the Fallen Dreams. Their brand new album comes out on March 10th, which is the day after this podcast releases. So go and get ready to check it out and enjoy this episode with us. Are you guys ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast. The amount of times we've seen incredible, incredible music coming from a rising empire has been astounding. And now they branch in the U.S. as well. We've talked to another Michigan band from there that's on that same label. And this one just keeps getting even better. This band's self album comes out on March 10th. If you like that modern metal and metal core style, you're not going to miss out on any of this. So please, please, please welcome Chad from the band For the Fallen Dreams, the podcast. So Chad, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. Hey, I appreciate you for having me, man. Good to be here. Good to have you here as well, sir. How has everything been going on in your neck of the woods? As you know, we're already into 2023, but right before the album's about to drop, I mean, how's everything going? been great man um you know uh, lots of very busy uh very busy start of the year so far obviously with having the uh the record on the horizon to be released here um we're out on the road right now with uh gideon orthodox and guerrilla warfare so it is uh uh back to uh back to the grind man back out here on the road and ripping some shows and uh enjoying spending time with the fans and playing new songs and old songs so all good juice Nice. How is everything going on this Gideon tour right now, especially leading up to the new album? Because I know you guys got this tour right now. And then right after the album comes out, I mean, you guys are just going to continue to keep ripping on it. So how has everything been going on this Gideon tour? Great. Great, man. This tour has been a blast. Um, we uh, This is this is the band's first tour uh, since the pandemic. So this is our first tour in, in three and a half years. Um, didn't work out that way on purpose. We just kind of, uh, you know, we were focusing on writing, um, and, and, and we kind of let the chips fall where they, where they may. And it just kind of worked out to, uh, get back out here, even though we would like to do it, done it sooner. Um, you know, right when things opened up, we had there, you know, there were so many bands going out and, uh, you know, there was a show, um, six, seven days a week. So we, uh, we focused just on writing, you know, getting, getting our bearings back and, uh, becoming, a. Uh, we took so much time off, as did everybody from the pandemic, of just being a real band again. Um, so getting in, everybody in the room together, uh, writing music, you know, just feeling out where we wanted to take this uh, next record, our seventh studio album. Um, almost a month and a half difference from when we released our very first record in 2008, uh, our debut album Changes with Rise Records. So almost 15 years to the month. Um so it's been great, man. You know, lots going on, lots to celebrate. 
uh, to be back out here on the road with Gideon. They're, they're smashing it right now. And, and so is Orthodox and Guerrilla Warfare. So it is, uh, it's been a great run to, uh, to jump back into after all this time there. I mean, it has to be, and it makes a lot of sense what you guys did, especially right after, you know, the pandemic kind of broke a little bit and bands are going back out on the road because even from a fan standpoint, it felt like every single possible band was going out and touring because you couldn't do it for like a year and a half to almost two years. So it was the opportunity was now there. It's everyone was chomping at the bit for it, but it was hard for the fans because, you know, all of a sudden in 2022, inflation's on the rise, prices keep going up, wages don't go up on our end very much. So it's like we have to pick and choose which shows we end up wanting to go to. Or if you're like me, you just throw all your money at shows and be like, you know what, let's have some fun with this shit and see what happens. But then right. you can only be in one place at one time. If I've got a show that's happening here in Milwaukee and then there's one in Chicago and one in Madison, I'm like, which one do I go to? But from your guys' perspective, being able to get back into the room together, just being able to be a band once again and write this record and really take that process in. I mean, especially being back out on the road right now for your first time since the pandemic, it has to be paying dividends, especially when you're playing these new songs live and seeing the reaction from the fans. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to, to give it out here and, you know, we, we, we curated a pretty solid set over all records. Um, you know, we, we knew coming into this tour that there was going to be, you know, a lot of old fans that wanted to come out and hear songs from, you know, 15 years ago, we, we knew, you know, just we have we have, again, seven records. So to, to, to kind of have to pick and choose what we were going to play and curate and, and it, it's not we're not headlining. So to curate a set that was, you know, still time sensitive, but still push uh, the envelope for our new stuff. You know, it's, it's it can be a little tricky, but um, it's been great as far as uh, just just have seeing all the new fans. You know, again, we've been a band for a very long time, so to be playing new songs uh, and people hearing it for the first time and playing old songs and the new fans are hearing that for the first time. It's just kind of a double whammy. It was, um, it's been really good. Um, love it, man. Nothing that can't have nothing but great things to say about um, the, this run so far. It's been a blast. I mean, that's always a positive thing to say as well. And that's one thing that's got to be interesting, especially from your end, you know, again, touring after first time in like three, three and a half years, where you're playing new songs and you have a lot of fans that are coming out and seeing you guys for the first time that got into your previous record and are now getting into all the singles that are coming off of your self-titled and then mixing them with the fans that absolutely love some of the older stuff, mixing with fans from Gideon and just everybody all around there. Everyone's getting a chance to say, hey, this is some of the old stuff. We love this. And then the new fans are sitting there thinking, oh my God, we get new old stuff and we haven't even heard this. this is like new shit to us. And then yeah. vice versa with the new stuff. Everyone's just kind of getting to experience yep. for the fallen dreams all over again for the first time. It feels like whether you're a new fan or an old fan. Absolutely. Great way to put it. Yeah. Every night I, I usually like to test the waters, the crowd, and, you know, just see who are, who are new listeners, who are old listeners. And it's usually about 50, 50. So that's, it's a good mix, man. It's, it's uh, uh, the fans have been phenomenal. It feels great to to be back out here singing along with everybody and just enjoying our time back on the road. Would you want that mix to be anything other than 50-50? Because then that just speaks to just, you know, you have a fan base that absolutely sure. loves the old stuff and a fan base that loves the new stuff just as much, and you get that equal standpoint. So when you go to shows, you can expect that kind of continued, you know, back and forth between old stuff and new stuff, and you're always going to have that positivity for going forward. Yeah, it's great for the band. You know, it's great for the growth of the band uh, to be pushing, you know, this this far into our career and still being able to push uh, new material that people haven't heard. You know, I've had a lot of people come up to us because um, I usually like to spend a good amount of time, at, you know, at the merch table to meet everybody. That's that's why we're here. You know, uh, there's no there's no rock star shit where we don't we, we don't we don't have time for the fans like that. That's the reason we're here, man. It's the reason this band has been able to survive for as long as we have is because of the fans. Um, so having fans come up to us um that are saying um oh man I, i've i've been listening to you guys for so long but i've never seen you which is wild and then we have people coming up to us saying i know the name but i've never actually given it an honest listen through and that's amazing and then we have the og ftft fans that are like i remember listening to y'all when i was in middle school and i've seen you guys 10 15 times so it's such a good mix of everything um, and this this tour, this tour package is is bringing out you know um, old fans, uh, the new fans. It's uh, it's it's been great, man. I, I, again, I, I know I've said it already a few times, but it's it's it was a best case scenario as far as is making this tour happen and how it's went so far. Oh, I I can kind of 
kind of a test from just like other people I've heard go to see that Gideon show with you guys on there because mm-hmm. I had a couple of friends that were at the show the, the night before we were recording this and they were sending me all these different videos like, dude, you got to check this out. Do you got to check this out? And someone sent me, yeah. dude, you got to have for, for the Fallen Dreams on the podcast. And my response to them yeah. was tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, sick. There you go. So are you from, are you from the Midwest then? Yeah, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, you're from Milwaukee. Okay. So yeah, we played West uh, Chicago uh, Social Club last night. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm, I'm usually down in Chicago for a whole bunch of shows because it's like, you know, if no one's coming to Milwaukee for shows at times, I can always either look to see where else they are in the area. But Chicago is always like the first place I look. I mean, it's the third largest metropolitan area in the United States. Right. That's Mitch, more than likely where it's going to happen. Mitch. Mitch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's, it's super rad. Um, we've always had a good time in Milwaukee. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since we've been to Milwaukee. Uh, oh, we can change that soon. We played Madison. Uh, maybe six seven years ago so that was the last time we were up in that area um but it's been a minute man it's been a minute six seven years you got since me? You've... yeah i got you uh, i was cutting out but cool all right there we go yeah, it's been six... a minute man it's been a minute man we got to get you guys back up to the to the wisconsin right. or whether it's madison or milwaukee you guys you just played chicago so it does make sense but at the same time yeah. like i'd love to have you guys come up here just so that can get you guys up on stage you guys can play a one hell of a show and then all this crazy people like myself all of a sudden we just open up that crowd go smashy smashy with there each other go. have an absolute blast there we go man that's what it's all about that that is all what it's all about and now that you've been back out on the road with this gideon tour you know you guys have been able to connect with so many of the fans being back out the merch table just being able to talk with people have you had any types of like interactions just stand out to you, especially with it being your first time out on the road since the pandemic um uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, a lot of our songs are always written from a place of, you know, uh, a personal experience, um, struggles and trials and tribulations and ups and downs and all that stuff. That's, you know, writing about the human condition is, is kind of something uh, that I've always, that's just kind of always been my writing style. And, and it's a lot of people's writing style, but uh, that's where music comes through in the most genuine form is when you're writing from experience and you you get those fans that are able to connect with you on a whole different level. You know what I mean? There's a lot of great bands out there um, that write songs about, um, you know, like uh, uh, dragons and, and wizards. And there's some crazy concept uh, bands out there that write about some crazy shit. But when you're really writing from a place of struggle or hardship or just um, general emotion, you know, you're going to connect with fans. You're going to, you're going to connect with people on some level. It could be the tens of millions. It could be just one or two people. Um, but the, the beauty of being on the road is that that gives an open invitation to any of those people that have heard your music and it's touched them in, in some kind of way or resonated with them. Um, so it's, it's usually, um, it's a pretty common thing to have fans come out, uh, and, and come up to the merch table like, Hey man, uh, I really appreciate y'all playing this song. This got me through, um, this time in my life, or uh, I've had a lot of guys in the service when like I was listening to the band when I was stationed overseas um, on, on a tour over there in Afghanistan, you know, that was, we've had a bunch of military guys come out on a few of the, the shows in um, like Virginia beach and stuff that they've been in the service for a long time. And, you know, we've had such a, a, a lengthy career that it's followed them through their whole walks of life and anybody, anybody, like anybody going through anything. It's, we've had such a long uh, uh, track history of, of, of music that it's, it's kind of been able to aid a lot of people throughout uh, all their growing pains, man. And that's, and I've talked about this before. Uh, nostalgia is such a powerful thing, you know? So a lot of fans are coming out just because they're like, Oh man, I remember hearing you guys uh, when I was going through this 10 years ago and it got me through. And I just want to say thank you. So it's, it's always a very, very humbling feeling. It's always, um, uh, it, it kind of gives us purpose when we're out here doing that, especially as a singer songwriter. Um, you know, to, to have someone come up, a complete stranger, that's just like, hey, man, like what you did and what you're doing um, has helped me. And that and that makes me feel as if I'm doing something right. If anything else, um, that makes me feel uh, like I've, I've, I've truly made a, an impact uh, with, with what I'm doing uh, to the fans and, and everybody else. Well, when you think about it, too, anytime music really has that strong presence in anybody's life, it's going to come from a place of absolute, you know, genuine feelings and genuine writing. Cause I think about, you know, 
there are bands that write amazing songs like you said about Dragon about wizards i'm thinking about even like electric callboy they write amazing songs about just the most random ridiculous stuff sure. But yeah. then you get bands that when they write, especially from a such a heartfelt, heartfelt, soulful place, talking about the human condition, whether it could be something like I'm just trying to think some examples like I got my bot, giant We Came as Romans flag in the back, like everything they went through following the passing of Kyle Pavone. And mm-hmm. you think about how people are connecting with just music in that way, because they can connect with all the hardship and all the emotions that are at the center of it. What you guys put out, I'm even thinking about the ghost inside as well with their 2020 album that kind of brought that comeback after the whole entire bus crash, that whole entire thing. It just connects with people on so much of a different level because when you boil down the emotion to it, there's such this connection of just this base motion to the human condition, whether it might be, whether it's something of triumph, whether it's something tragic, whether it's like a, Mm -hmm. anything to deal with the relationship, death, um, depression, anxiety, whatever it is. And sure. people can boil that down to the core and then listen to that song and relate it to them because they understand that emotion, but then they put their own pieces, their own story in there. It's like a movie right. in their head. And then Absolutely. they relate to it to the point where they can come up to you and remember those feelings they heard from your song, time the song you heard it the first time or those original right. ones that you guys put out 15 years ago. And that's when you get those right. guys coming up and really connecting with you. And that's such a powerful thing that you have to take as like a huge point of pride as a songwriter because you're impacting these people's lives in such a positive way through your creation. Absolutely, Absolutely man. And that's, that's always been, um, since the beginning, that's always been something that we've always taken a lot of pride in just to, to have people, uh, you know, uh, be a part of people's lives, be a part of people's journeys. You know, it's, it's a, like a very common thing that I'll talk to, you know, fans through DMS or through the band's DMS or whatever, when they, you know, when they, they send us something and I try my best to always, respond to everybody because um it means something man it means something to the fans it means something to me um so it's it's a it's a it's, a, it's one of the the perks of of doing this and then doing it for this long you know what i mean doing it this long and still getting to have those moments uh, on the road with fans and and uh it's it's there's nothing like it so uh, we do not take it for granted myself uh, especially and that's something that's every time I've seen a band, especially recently, when it comes to really creating that genuine connection with the fans, they have that mentality of when fans are going to go and reach out to them, they know that any kind of interaction back to them is going to mean something very deep to them. I mean, think right. about it. If you think about your favorite artists, if when you were younger, if you had a way to reach out to them and then they just responded back to you with a genuine message, how sure. much would that have meant to you in the long run? You'd been like, oh, my fucking God, this is awesome. <laughs> So well, it did. I mean, I mean, I, that that did happen with me. That happened. One of the reasons I'm doing what I'm doing now is because of the moments like that. As a kid, like I remember, I was probably this is 2002. I was probably I'm 35 now, so I was probably 12, 13, something like that, around that age. I don't know. Uh, my math is awful, <laughs> but I was 12, 13, and I went and seen Papa Roach uh, in Detroit. Um, and I live uh, about an hour and some change north of Detroit. So I always had to travel and I didn't have a license. So I, I would think I went with a friend, a senior in high school that had his license. We went down there to see Papa Roach. Um, and I was walking just, just through the crowd. No big deal. We're at this venue called St. Andrews Hall in downtown Detroit. And I seen Jacoby. Um, and I was just like, you know, being a young 12, 13 year old kid, you know, at first I'm just, I'm completely starstruck. I'm seeing Jacoby Shattuck, you know, <laughs> Um, I'm, you know, thinking like, there's no, is that, that's actually him. This is, this is Jacoby Shaddix from, from Papa Roach. Oh my gosh. So I'm, I just, you know, bombarded him right away. Uh, 12, 13 years old and said, Hey, Jacoby, can, you know, can I get a picture? And he was like, absolutely, absolutely. And this is when we still had the Fuji, uh, cameras, the disposable cameras. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my buddy took a picture of me and Jacoby, uh, and then, uh, he was like, Hey man, uh, do you want to come up to the green room? um and meet the rest of the band you know and i'm again i'm just a kid so so he's like well come on up man no like you're like just just follow me so he takes me up uh to the green room uh of st andrew's hall and um papa roach is there uh this band called uh dead sea uh a band called uh i think they had some of the members of orgy in it at the time uh and another band called sugar cult uh but anyway we were up there and you know and just hanging out i'm 13 years old hanging out with papa roach and I'm telling him I'm, you know, cause I, I was a bass player at the time. I had my own band playing bass in it and I'm sitting there telling him like, oh, I'm a bass player and I'm, I'm like, I'm a huge fan and we play these songs. We cover Deftone songs. And, and he was just so nice, man. He was such a genuinely just nice guy to a young kid. He didn't, he didn't need to 
he didn't need to invite me up to their green room. He didn't need to give a shit about who I was. You know what I mean? Um, and he was a young guy at the time too. He's probably, you know, in his twenties and, and, you know, so for him to do that and show me that respect and kindness when they are at like the height, right. This is, mm-hmm. this was after infest came out and this was during, uh, the love, hate tragedy cycle. So they're in it. Like, they're not like a mm-hmm. no name band. They're selling out, you know, a 1300 cap venue. And he was just super nice to me, man. And it, it was moments like that. Uh, that made me think like this is awesome like i can i want to do this i can do this i can be this guy i can be i can be him you know what i mean uh i had a similar instant uh, or a similar interaction with uh the uh, uh, uh jeff from poison the well um same thing uh poison the well was like poison the well was like one of the first bands that wasn't like a new metal or an alternative rock band for me uh, that was more metalcore and had breakdowns mm-hmm. like poison the well was that crossover band uh for me and i went and seen um poison the well with don't your escape plan and um murder by murder by death or death by stereo i can't remember which either way so i i, I see the bass player jeff and i say to i say to jeff i was like hey man same thing like i'm a huge fan just wanted to say hi um and uh i was like uh well let, let me let me dial back real quick I, I i the reason i met jeff from poison the well was because i was on poison the well.com and i just wrote them an email i just wrote him an email was like you guys are my favorite band like i love you guys and he sent me back an email some really creepy shit i'm gonna tell you so he <laughs> sends me back an email and he's like we appreciate you as a fan like thank you so much uh we're playing Detroit. I hope you got your tickets. Uh, and when he wrote me back, it was poison the well at AOL.com. So I don't know how, how old are you? I'm 28. Do you remember AOL or no? Like Absolutely. Messenger? Okay. So you, yeah, all right. So you, yeah, you're not that much younger than me, but so AOL was like instant messenger. And if you have AOL, your AOL email is also your screen name. Um, so I was like, well, if that's his email, that's got to be his screen name. So I instant messaged Poison the Well or whatever it was and sent him a, a, an instant message. And he wrote me back and I was like, hey, man, not to sound weird, but I was just talking to you through email. This is this is Chad, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and he's like, well, come out to the show. I'll put you on the guest list. I had never been on a guest list before. Um, again, I'm like 12, 13, maybe 14 now at the time. Um, I get to the show. I'm not on the guest list. I'm like, oh, no, I'm all the way down here with my friend who's a senior in high school. I can't drive. I'm an hour and a half away from home. I'm not on the guest list. What now? And no cell phones back then. Mm-hmm. I didn't have his I didn't have his beeper number. I didn't have a sidekick or anything to, like, send him a message like, hey, man, I'm not on the list. So I was kind of just standing outside like a dummy. Um, and I see Jeff, the singer, walk through the crowd. And I just being being a kid, I was like, hey, Jeff. I know your bass player. He said I was on the guest list. I'm not on the guest list. And uh, and he's like, let me go get him for you. And he got Jeff, the bass player from Poison the Well. He got me into the show. We ended up talking, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and I'm still friends with Jeff from Poison the Well to this day. From that interaction of me at 14 years old. Um, and he went on to tour manage and play bass for Chris Daughtry. I've known him for a very long time. Uh, but just, just funny how that stuff works out. So to to go all the way back to what you said, um, you know, uh, those moments matter. Those moments can change somebody's life. Um, me talking to a fan and saying, stick with it or great to meet you. I hope you had a good time at the show. Thank you so much for your support. Stuff like that matters. And sometimes artists in my space uh, or, 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 or larger than my space. Um, I think take for, take that for granted at times. And we don't really realize myself included because we've done this for mm-hmm. so long, how impactful interactions, genuine interactions with the fans, uh, can go really a long way and change, change people's whole perspective, uh, on their day. It doesn't even have to be music related. It can change how they view their next day at work or what they're going to do that night or just, just the simple amount of mm-hmm. kindness that comes from someone that they look up to 
goes a long way, man. It really does. And it, it changed interactions like that with Jacoby and Jeff and boys and that, that, that should change my life. And because of those interactions, it helped guide me to where I'm at now, uh, to be able to play music for a living and, and meet fans and, and do podcasts with people I don't know. Right. It's, it's, it's great. It's crazy. So it's, uh, it all, it's, it's all very humbling and, 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 and I, I still enjoy every bit of it today. Oh my God. I mean, first off, I got to thank you for sharing both of those stories because that just speaks to the yeah. power of those types of interactions and what they have on people. And the one thing I kept thinking about during those, you know, those stories was when you're talking about the interaction that you have with uh, people that have been in the service, the, the amount of impact that you got your music has had on them while they were, uh, you know, in active duty or during their time in the service sure. and then being able to come and see you guys live and come up to you, and, you know, relate to that. And just having that genuine interaction in there, it, it just creates such a powerful bond. And the other thing you said too is it doesn't matter, you know, if it's going to impact them on like this absolute whole holistic at level, like it's going to completely change their lives, change their perspective and let them go, you know, in a completely different path in life. Or if it just changes something up about, you know, maybe their mood that night. But it's just those yeah. small interactions can be the largest thing that can cause someone to start feeling good about themselves. It's those times when things are not going well, they can revert back to those times, remember what had happened and just feel like, you know what? This is absolutely fantastic. I still love life because the music that I yeah. love, the interactions that I've had, there's such a positive force in life. When things are going wrong, I can always look back on that and say, you know what? Music is the thing that can help me get through all this. Absolutely. fucking Lily. Music, um, it, it's it's a very cliche thing. They hope people always say it, but it's the goddamn truth that that music heals in all things you know whatever it's always an escape that's why these people um that's why i myself go to shows just to get away just enjoy the music and just kind of hear the songs i love to hear connect with those songs live um so yeah man music's powerful and it it, uh, it heals and it, it helps us through uh good times and bad and um we do not take it for granted Kind of like the perfect segue into this because with you guys writing this record, you know, we're coming right out of the pandemic, finally getting able to get back in a room together while everyone else was touring. What was that process like, especially being back together since the pandemic? But on top of that, just talking about how music heals. I mean, we had just gone through a whole entire pandemic isolation period. Nothing like that has ever been experienced before in any of our lives. So what was it like getting back to that sense of like positivity, that sense of just happier in your happier interactions, being able to record with the band? back in 2022 yeah it was um it was very very different at first because we had just had been so um no one had saw each other uh we didn't work we haven't been in a room together and then we kind of just were sending songs like most artists words is sending songs to each other through email and this that and the other and saying what do you think and how do you feel about this or do you got any ideas for that and i you know i had built a, a small studio in, in the in my basement um so I was demoing, I was demoing tracks and, and we kind of just finally made a hard date. We were like, okay, well, let's just book a date. We're going to just go in there and let's just fuck around and, and see what comes out. We'll go on there and, and knock out a few songs. Um, so we, we set up a, a, a studio day uh, in Michigan to kind of just get all of us back in the room together. We went in there with uh, two songs and um, we really didn't know what we were going to do. We, we kind of just, we had songs, but we, vocally, you know, I had stuff I had written, but I knew that I wanted to do something different. I knew that I wanted to push the envelope more. I just wasn't sure how yet. I wasn't sure how to execute it. You know, this is this is the first record that I've ever I've ever sang on. I've never sang uh, you know, clean vocals on a record before. So, you know, I went in there and, and the first track that we did, you know, I was like super nervous, you know, because I'm. I knew that I could I could get there, but I wasn't sure how good of a singer I was really going to be. When you put the headphones on and you and, and you hear the click track and you're like, okay, we're recording, and then you just go for it. And uh, first laid the first line down, and the producer was like, "Sounds great." I was like, "Okay, well, we're on the right track." So we just kept just kept going, man. It kind of all flowed from there. Uh, after we knocked out that one demo song, we uh, we booked some more studio dates to get back in. Uh, um, the first one was with a producer named Nick Scott, great guy, great producer. And then we booked some more dates. Uh, it was like three or four uh, to demo out uh, three or four more tracks um, with a producer named uh, Evan McKeever, great guy, great producer. Um, went in there and just it just 
it just flowed, man. Like uh, we've been, we've been a band for so long and kind of just, it took a few times to get into it. But it's one of the things like riding a bicycle, you know, once you, especially us, cause you know, we're a little seasoned. Um, we, once you get back on the bike and you kind of get over those first little hiccups of, Oh man, that sounds like shit or let's try it again. Then you start. Okay. I remember what, okay, this is, this is muscle memory. So all that time off, um, it took a few days or a few sessions to get in, back into it. But it, again, it was like riding a bike, man. And we kind of just all came together as a collective and, and just started piecing together songs that would inevitably be on this, this self-titled release. I gotta say, one thing I was a big fan of on the self-titled release has been more of the clean singing that's been in there and the mixture between sometimes, you know, get the unclean singing and the clean singing in there as well. But some of the songs that have just most of the majority of it being that clean style, it stands out as something that is, is a little bit different. But at the same time, when you're talking about things with the human condition, when you're really diving deep into some of those more personal side of things, it allows you to right. just expand on that emotion and expand that delivery because the connection between you know, some of the rougher vocals versus some of the cleaner vocals, it's going to be different. But when you go through them, especially like when you go through the song, what if it's just like, oh my God, you're just feeling it every step of the way through those clean vocals. Yeah. There's nothing that's missed there. It's, it's, a, it's, it's super duper powerful in terms of just hitting you like a, whoa, it's kind of, it's not like a yeah. forceful push, but it's kind of like a, just kind of like a, it's nudging you in that way and it just won't stop. Yeah, so it's like this constant pressure into getting into that uh, headspace. Yep. It's, it's a very, uh, it's a very fun ride of a record. You know, we've obviously released spor sporadic singles throughout no specific order. You know, they're all, all the singles that we have released are, are, um, you know, track listing wise, you know, all over the place. But, um, when, when you have the full record and uh, I'm sure you've already jammed it, but when the rest of the fans here, um, on March 10th are able to consume the record in its entirety, to jam the record from track one to track 11. It's a fun ride, man. It's a fun ride of a, of a record. It has a little something for everybody. It has some very heavy, harsh screaming songs that are just hit you in the face, super heavy and metal. And then we have, you know, our, our the traditional, a few traditional metalcore songs that For the Fallen Dreams has always been known for. And then we have songs that kind of push the envelope into the more rock direction. We have some electric um you know industrial style stuff it, it, the record is a fun ride it's it's got something for everybody um and that was what we wanted to do we wanted to go in there and kind of just put together a piece of work that was cohesive but was still just had a little bit of flavor for everyone all of our different favorite uh, favorite styles that we've liked as fans uh we were able to like hey man you know we listen to shit like prodigy and we listen to stuff like nine inch nails let's do a song that sounds like the prodigy and nine inch nails or you know a song like uh the song searching searching is uh probably one of my favorite if not my favorite track on the record and it sounds like a pod song uh then you have songs like super personal that have like super poppy uh, uh chorus but then you know like almost like after the burial-esque breakdowns in it like we we did a little bit of everything to kind of showcase uh who we are as a band who i am as a vocalist what i'm able to do and just kind of still make it a cohesive piece of work so um it's a good record man i love it it's it's one of if, if you're not a fan of your of your band if you're not if you're not your favorite band you're doing it wrong for the fallen dreams is my favorite goddamn band so i love it it's it's uh and i hope everybody enjoys it as, as much as as we did uh creating it that might be one of the coolest things I've ever heard anyone say. You need to be a fan. You need to be a fan of your favorite band, and your band has to be your favorite band. I mean, it just makes so much sense because why, why wouldn't you be? It's your creation. And going through your self-titled album as well, because, yes, I have gone through it. I'm looking at my note sheet right now. It's 19 pages long because I was not going to skip a beat on oh, any right. song. I was going to go through it. And even think about, too, you know, you said it's a fun ride. And all I got to say to that is, yeah, it absolutely is a fun ride because you're not going to get this same old, same old stuff all the way through. You're going to open up with reanimate. It's going to hit you heavier. It's going to hit you harder. Yeah. You're going to be like, all yeah, right, let's go to this. Then you jump into what if, and it's like, um, this this definitely took a different turn. And it just keeps going like that, but it's in such a fun way. When you brought up searching as well, I'm already starting to think in my head. When you said POD, just kind of emulating that sort of a feel, it does, especially when you hit those verses, just the way that they flow together. I'm like, this could definitely be POD. But then you hit that chorus 
and it has such more of this like melodic flow to it where Absolutely. it just creates this grander just discovery feel throughout the whole entire right. song. And you're only halfway through the album at that point. You still right. feel like you have, you know, what is it, five more songs, four or five more songs left to just really get into this even more so. It's just, man, yep. I'm already starting to think about it. I'm getting chills just thinking about it again. There you go, man. There we go. Good shit. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's... uh. And, and that is as an artist again is just to be able to um just kind of just spread your wings you know there's now more than ever for us that you know making it a self-titled record as well was um you know a statement from us you know seven records in and now we do a self-titled now we do a self-titled when the music shift is um you know it's there that you can there's a clear musical shift with the band there's no denying that you know you know this isn't the same band and it doesn't sound the same as when we first started. And, but that's progression. That is, that is, you know, and sometimes you have, you have the distinction of people saying they, they're selling out or they're, they're just doing this to, to make money or to stay relevant. It's like, what this is, is the progression of us as human beings in musical form. It, when you listen to our first record changes, it's very bare bones. We were 19 years old when we wrote that record. We're 35 now. I'm 35, going to be 36. We were other guys in the band who were, who were pushing 40. Um, old as fuck. But um, it's it's progression. It's it's you 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 when you listen to For the Fallen Dreams, our discography through record one through seven, it is a clear distinction that you're listening to kids progressively growing and be, and finding themselves through their own music you know so when you get those and everyone you know the, the vocal uh minority is always gonna speak up and say mm-hmm. you know play your old shit you know and, and that's fine we love it we, we love any feedback we get and we still love playing old songs but um the, the fun stuff with writing like this new record was it was just it's it's a it's a it's our progression as human beings and and adults in musical form uh, to reach these new heights of i want to be the best version of me with everything i do i want to be the best uh, husband i can be i want to be the best brother and, and son i can be i want to be the best musician i can be i want to be the best singer and songwriter i can be and the only way you achieve that is by putting yourself in situations that you're not used to to progress you need to be in uncomfortable situations to achieve new heights. So that's another reason why I love this record is because it mm. it's the it's a record that put me in an uncomfortable situation of well I know I can scream but can I sing? Mm. Can I can we pull off a sound change mm. so late in our career? Yes we can. And and that was that was a very rewarding feeling to to finish this record and feel like good bad and different um we accomplished what we set out to accomplish with this record. So um, she's a good ride. It's a fun record and I'm, I'm glad you dig it. And I hope, I hope, I hope everybody else does. as well. I think everyone else will as well. And one thing that just always peaks in my mind, whenever I hear people talk about, you know, a change in sound is like, Oh, is it sell out? No. Well, we're just progressing as people and we're progressing our sound. I think about back in 2020 when Ask and Alexandra came out with their record and it's like, oh, it's not as heavy as the old stuff used to be. And they said, yeah, well, we're not the same people we were back when we wrote it in 2008 or 2009. You know, right. as time goes on, they, they, they go through different things as people. When you're 20 years old versus when you know you're 32, 33, maybe you're married, maybe you have kids, maybe you've gone through different things. Like your perspectives are going to change and the sounds that you end up relating to for those emotions that you're writing about are right. going to change. So you're going to end up creating this, evolve so i'm not gonna say it's a massive change because if all of a sudden it's like you know you're going from you know like country music all of a sudden now you're playing heavy metal okay now there's a different kind of a change there but when it comes to this progression that you guys went through where it's you see the dynamics that are on your self-titled album i can tell you put you in a different position especially with those clean vocals but the things you guys were able to do on this album where try so many different things look at the music that you absolutely love and see you know what does what kind of influence does it have on us with our style with for the fallen dreams and really put it together i mean like you said with searching it has that pod feel but then all of a sudden you get to the chorus and it's just this more just opened up just 
yeah kind of revelation feel and it feels fantastic yeah. i'm gonna go back to reanimate because now that one's just gonna have a heavier hit to it it's gonna open up the album and all the old fans are gonna love it or if you're like myself going through it the one song i kept coming back to was song number five on the track list which is testify that one i couldn't get enough of every time i like even before we were on this one on this call i probably listened to this thing like four or five times through just to get yeah. amped up before we jumped onto this yeah good deal yeah testify is a fun song man and it's it goes right back to what we've been talking about. It's just, it's, it's got a little bit for everybody. Um, so uh, all in all, very pleased with it. Um, and uh, we're just, we're here to enjoy uh, the fruits of our labor this many years later. And, and it's back on the grind. It, it never ends. And uh, this is what we do, man. And, and that's what the pandemic uh, kind of did for us is, is it helped us realize, helped me realize that, music and creation and being a, a singer and being a, a vocalist lyricist whatever you want to call it is uh is something i, I genuinely love to do and then that's that's something that is is deep in me you know we've, we've tried the things where we've taken time off and you know people have uh, we've tried other things and the band has never went on a hiatus but we've taken time in between releases to kind of just get a grasp on life but the pandemic made us and myself realize that like, this is, this is what I do. Like at the end of the day, like I am a musician, I am, I am an artist and, you know, I just want to create music for people to consume and, and, and getting the opportunity still to come on the road and, and, and put pen to paper uh, to really just play these songs live and, and chat with the fans is goes back to everything else we've been talking about. Those, those moments are just as important as, as the creation part. It's the silver lining from the pandemic where, yeah, there was a lot of things that went on where, you know, we were all stuck in our houses. We couldn't go out. We couldn't have that much social interaction. And we had to really evaluate what we were doing at that point in time because life had completely changed. Like, you know, right. But, you know, on March 17th, March 18th, 2020 hit, life was not going to be the same going forward. But you got to take a step back and realize, and this is for everybody what are you doing and is what you're doing something that you want to be doing the rest of the way? And for you being able to sit back, take a look at that and say, making music is still the thing I want to do. This is what is for me. And I'm even more excited about this going forward yeah. and especially able to create this record and really try so many different things on there. It just shows that progression. Not only is the band, but also you can see the passion that's still through here as well. Because once again, I'm going to say it, there are so many different nuances to this album where I'm going to go back to testify even for my little kind of mindset on this going through the verse. I'm thinking like, it sounds like for the phone, but also it's kind of like this interesting, like Lincoln Park kind of vibe to it with the way the sure. verse are constructed. And then we get to the chorus and I'm thinking, you know, I wonder where they're going to go with this. And I'm just thinking the whole entire time I'm hearing the vocals, the way the vocals sound against the backing heavier instrumentals. I'm thinking it's like for the fallen dreams and Chevelle had a baby, but then the <laughs> outro to the chorus, it just gets heavy once again. I'm yeah. like, okay, everything yeah. is coming through together, but it's such a catchy, like it just sticks in my brain with that chorus. It's going to be something yeah. where, I'm going to be pushing this song to people. It's like, hey, if you want to get in the, the new album from For the Fallen Dreams, check out Testify because it has everything you're going to want in there from the experimental side these guys went on, plus yeah. really sticking to what is for, for the Fallen Dreams at their core. Yeah. Everything is there in that one song, at least from my uh, mindset specifically. No, I, I completely agree. The, the Testify is, is a great representation of the record. It's got a little bit of, of everything, and it, it absolutely keeps you guessing. Um, so yeah, man, that's, that's, that's a, a great, uh, great assessment for sure. I think testify is, is a, is a good one to kind of like, if you've never heard these guys or you're unsure about the record, listen to this, let that hook you in and then bring on the rest of the record. Oh yeah. Cause you're going to get the stuff that the heavier people and the rest of the record to be like, whoa. And then the people that are just, right. you know, getting into the band that have a more of a lighter nuance to them. There'd be stuff on there. That's going to have them like, Oh my God, yeah. this is beautiful. And then everything <laughs> in between. So now that you've, you know, right before the record releases, you've been able to talk with some people about it. You've been able to play some of these songs live for the new s songs that might have, you know, some of that softer side, some more of the experimental side. What have been the reception, not only from, you know, you talking about them and hearing, you know, that direct fan feedback, maybe from shows, what have you heard about this album before the release? Um, I mean, I guess for like our, our internal team, because I shared, um, you know, I've, I've shared like a, a private link with with a few peers and stuff like guys I've known for a long time throughout the industry. Um, <coughs> excuse me, Torkoff. Um, so I've, I've shared, um, you know, I've, I've shared the record with with some peers and friends 
Um, and then, uh, you know, so they've got to get the whole scope like you have. And then same, same, same type of uh, response uh, from them. Uh, they, they, similar to what you have. And like, so they're like, this is, this is rad, man. Like everyone kind of has their own. That's what's been cool too, is that everyone who's heard the record in, it, uh, in its entirety uh, that we've shared it with, everyone that comes back to us has a different favorite song. And that's sick. Cause that, that was another thing we wanted to accomplish with this record is saying, I want to make sure that every song on this record can be a single on its own. And when, when picking singles, it was funny because we'd be like, okay, well, let's do this as a single, this and this. And then we'd be like, this one's good too. <laughs> Shit. Like when we were shooting music videos, I remember we did last one out and we were like, oh man, is it going to be, is it going to be last one out or is it going to be testify? And we were like, it could be chemicals. It, just, it was very hard to pick like a favorite song but that's been what's cool about with sharing the music with people is that they everyone has a different favorite song the fans to hear them singing seeing fans singing the new song that's a great feeling we know that you know we know we've made a staple with the old stuff it's, there's no hiding that you know we're, I mean, we're very very uh appreciative of, of what our old music has done for this band uh the foundation that it's laid um, but to be around this long and still have so many records out and still putting out new music and having fans now singing the new stuff uh, is great, man. It's, it's it's a really good feeling to know that, hey, man, we still got it. Like, these songs are resonating with people. It might take a minute to catch everybody onto them, um, but they are landing. So uh, it's it's been cool just to just to, to play them live, man, and see see the fans singing uh, the new stuff. That's, it's, it's a very rewarding uh, feeling. You did something right. I mean, you're seeing it all over. You're seeing the fans sing along with it. Everyone that's been able to hear the album before was everyone has a different favorite song. And even when you guys, you know, picking through these songs, which ones are going to be singles, which are going to be videos, you're having just as much trouble picking a favorite as we did trying to pick yeah. a favorite while we were listening to it. Right. So it speaks to just the fact that this album is going to connect with everyone on such on some kind of level. It's not going to be yeah. somewhere it's it's going to connect or it isn't. It's like, well, you have so many different avenues that you can connect with people based on how the songs are presented, how the songs sound, what everyone really gets into. And it's a lot easier, especially for my mind, after he like again with mine being testify just like i can go any direction from the lighter side because i mean i looked at my highlights or like my favorite songs in here of course testify was my favorite what if was one of my other favorites and that's much more of a you know that's lighter Absolutely. then i go reanimate reanimate heavier i'm like this is all nuts i'm liking all different sides of this <laughs> it opens up the ability to really dive into this album and just enjoy it from whatever perspective you like and get that other perspective with songs of a different style and it kind of is good to have that kind of a problem where we're not sure which ones we should put out as singles or which ones you could put out as music videos, not because you're not sure of how they're going to, but it's because they all could be that way. It's like an embarrassment of sure. riches, a problem as, as you could say it. It's a great problem to have. And we've said that to ourselves over and over again. We're like we have, a, it's, it's, this is a problem, but it's a good problem to have that. There's not a, there's no good or there's no bad answer. Like no matter which song we decide to use, you know, there's certain like no heavens, you know, that, that song's done. Uh, very well at radio you know this is and this is the first time that full of fallen dreams has done radio campaigns on fm radio um so to have no heaven and what if they were both they both had radio campaigns behind them um no heaven was was a was a home run as far as um it being a, a radio single you know it was it was in the uh, the top 50 uh, uh billboard uh rock active rock songs and um same with what if it was what if was in the top 60 active rock songs so um those were undeniably tracks that can fit in certain spaces but you know the other tracks they reanimates very heavy mm -hmm. might not be a radio song but it's 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 your opening ass beater of a track you know it's it's, it's all it's all fun man they all got their mm -hmm. own their own thing it's, it's what makes me mad that I couldn't go down and see you guys in West Chicago the night before we shot this because seeing Reanimate live and being able to throw down the middle of that pit sounds like yeah, yeah. I should have been out. <laughs> oh, man. It was it was great. Uh, West Chicago Social Club. I don't know if you've ever been there. But um, super rad venue. Uh, we had a lot of people out. And um, we had guys who worked there saying, like, you know, we haven't seen West Chicago Social Club this packed in years and it was a great show you know obviously it, it, it's 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 uh everyone pulling their way it's us it's gideon it's it's um uh, guerrilla warfare it's orthodox a great package 
but it was such a rad show, man. You definitely, uh, definitely missed out. But we'll we'll be back, bro, and uh, we'll have to play some 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 tunes. Hopefully, testifies on the set list next time. Hopefully so, because man, that that does hurt. But, but the last thing I want to ask is now that you know, right after the re- release of this interview, you know the record's gonna be out. Everything else, be out, everyone's gonna get their hands on it. When it comes to the rest of 2023, what is planned for for the Fallen Dreams? Now, if there's nothing specific you can give out, I don't want you to give anything specific. But if you can tease something a little bit, like we got some good shit coming, like I'm all yeah. here for it because I want to, like especially if they're missing you guys at West Chicago the night before we shot this. Like now I'm right. getting I'm getting giddy. I'm yeah. getting anxious. Like I must see this live. There we go. Man. Yeah, um, I mean, you'll definitely have your chance this year. So we, um, we're, I can't announce anything yet, mm-hmm. but we'll, we'll be back on the road in the states uh, sometime this summer. We're working on a few different things, just seeing what makes the most sense uh, for us. But we will absolutely be back on the road after this run in the states, uh, working on some stuff overseas as well. We always we have a great, uh, great fan base over there. We've we've done a, a countless uh, European tours, so we're excited to get back overseas. Uh, so just staying busy, man, just, you know, putting in the work, um, even for a band uh, that's been around as long as us, it, it's still, it's still work. It's, it's, you, you pull your, you pull your, your pants up, put your buckle on and in you, your boots and you go to work. You make sure that you're staying busy. You make sure that the fans uh, can access your music live. It, it's gotta, it's gotta be an experience. It can't just be the record. So we're, we're trying to stay as busy as possible. And we know, um, after all these years that it's it's just important for the creation as it is to play live for the fans so staying busy and we will uh, absolutely be back uh in the good old midwest whether it be chicago again or or, or milwaukee because we're long overdue uh for a milwaukee or, or a madison show too oh you guys are long overdue and i cannot wait for that moment because you're gonna probably be up on stage and if you see some crazy dude in the milwaukee brewers hat in the pit it's like why the hell is that dude going like nuts it's like that dude looks like he's having fun i can guarantee you him That'll be me. Right. That's Kevin. Hey, Kevin, I see you out there. I'll be like, hey, Chad, how's it going? And then probably get hit in the, from the side like, okay. Just, make sure, go, just make sure you get my name right. Don't call me Cody or something. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> like I did right before we started this. I knew he was going to come up at some point, but someone's got to roast me at some point. So thank you. <laughs> there you go, man. All good, brother. All good. All good. Well, Chad, as we bring this podcast to conclusion, one thing I'd like to do is give my guests, which is you in this instance, a chance they would ever want to say, plug everyone to plug, promote whatever, promote the end of the show. So the floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, um, our self-titled album for the Fallen Dreams out March 10th on Arising Empire Records. Uh, you can pre-order that on MerchBucket.com. Uh, you can go to ForTheFallenDreams.com for all the other tour dates and socials. Uh, at FTFD Band on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and For the Fallen Dreams on Facebook. So, uh, come say what's up, guys. Uh, uh, much love to everybody who's listening to this podcast. And uh, Kevin, uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you having me, brother. Thank you very much, Chad. Appreciate you having you on. Now it's time for this podcast with three things. First things first. Yes, for the Fallen Dreams self album comes out on March 10th. So you're going to want to make sure you pre-order that. Or if you're listening to this episode after the album's release, go and stream that bad boy right now. Go buy it. Go download all that good kind of stuff. Also, make sure you're That's following great. the band on social media and watching those YouTube videos, buying that merch, and of course, buying those tickets and making sure you're following them because you want to know when they're going to be coming around your area. Like me, I want to know when they're coming back to the Midwest because... I must see them live. I must be in that pit. And must have a good time. So here's what you're going to do. Description of the podcast. Say find for the fallen dreams online. There'll be links and labels for everything there. I'm doing all the search and I'm doing all the, you know, the hard work here. All you got to do is click the link, go and follow along with the band. It's very easy. Now it's time for number two. Chad. Whenever I've guessed in the podcast, I enjoy being on the podcast. I tend to make a certain promise as a way to say thank you for being on the podcast. And I would love to continue to support the band in any way I can. Of course, you absolutely hit on this promise. So my promise is not if. It is when, when I get to see you perform live for the first time. Because I know you said like to open the merch table afterwards. I will come to the merch table. I will find you. I will say hi, Chad. And also, first round's on me. Ah, oh, rad, man. Good deal. Appreciate it. So hold me to it. You'll see the Bruce hat come. It's like I know what I that dude's you. coming for. I got you. He's coming. Here he is. All right, man. Let me get us. Let me get a get us. All right. You got it, and I'll come back with two because I'm gonna need one too. There you, you know? go, brother. Good deal. Perfect. And as we bring this podcast to conclusion, I cannot end this by saying goodbye because that is way too final. I made a promise to you and man, I can't have this be the only time I have you on the podcast. It was fantastic. I'd love to have you back on again in the future. So this can't be goodbye. This can't be. This has to be. I'll see you later. See you later, brother. Well, folks, that was my interview with Chad from For the Fallen Dreams. And now it is time for Kevin's final thought. 
So I could talk about, you know, the band's dynamic sound on this, writing from a place of, you know, very personal things where people can connect them. But I want to talk about the two stories that Chad told about Papa Roach and Poison the Well. And when you think about it, just the knowledge and the wherewithal for these guys to know that it means so much for people to connect with these bands and be able to understand that and deliver on that because they want to make sure their music makes as much of an impact as possible and to be able to deliver that and be able to connect with so many people, it means so much. I mean, take a look at Chad, being able to connect with Jacoby Shaddix, being able to connect with Poison the Well. If you look up to the green room, hanging out with him, when he was just 12, 13 years old, it meant so much to him that it just stood out as such a powerful thing. And look at where he is right now. He's still do, you know, making music with For the Fallen Dreams. They're releasing their self-titled album, their seventh overall album, on March 10th. It's absolutely incredible. I think about with myself and the amount of times I've had people on this podcast have been able to meet afterwards and just have them, you know, have some sign of kind of interaction, whether it's an interaction that might be a minute or two, whether it's an interaction where I get to talk to them for a little bit and have a beer with them like Joey Varea from Varsity or uh, Joey Arena from Outlier, or if it's like the time, you know, caskets came through to Milwaukee and I got to hang out with them on the bus, bring them a case of beer. And also at the same point in time, you get to hang out with the guys in holding absence as well. I mean, I think about that. I'm like, man. It really still impacts me in such a positive way. Their music has brought me in, has made me feel fantastic. And these interactions just, you know, keep driving me even more forward. If I get a chance to meet Tim Mackerth and have him on this podcast, I mean, you guys know I'm going to end up treasuring that for the rest of my days. Similar like Chad with the whole entire connection to Kobe and Poison the Well. It's something that he treasures forever. And it's something that he can rely on whenever, you know, maybe be feeling blue, might be feeling down. And for so many of us out there, you know, we treasure those moments with our favorite bands. So if you are in a band, if you are an artist, that is something to definitely, definitely, definitely remember is make sure you cr are creating those connections because they can go a very, very, very long way. And keep them genuine as well because we know when they're going to be fake. But those genuine ones, they stick with us forever. So when it comes to For the Fallen Dreams, you're going to want to follow me on social media. So all the links are in the description of the podcast along with where you can find the YouTube videos, where you can buy their merch, you can listen to the subtitle when it comes out on March 10th. And of course, they're going to be on the road again, either in Europe and the U.S. at some point again in 2023. So don't miss out on that. And if they're going to be in Milwaukee or Madison or even Chicago again, find the Brewers hat guy in the pit. That's going to be me. Ooh, yeah. Make sure you're also following along with the Corporate Gresham Podcast online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for your viewing pleasure. Wait, are you still doing Twitter? I don't even know him anymore. But make sure you're on those platforms. We post a lot of different short content, a lot of different cool stuff, and Instagram live streams every single Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central. Be sure you're hitting that subscribe button if you're on YouTube or follow along with us on the Spotify Podcast and anywhere else we might be, along with if we're syndicating on Concert Craft. Shout out to them as well. Um... If you're subscribed, thank you very much. Thank you for supporting us. If you're not, go and do that right now. If you're like, I don't want to subscribe right now, please reconsider. But you're always welcome back to the podcast. You're always welcome and accepted here. Also, thank you, Phoenix Fitness. Remember, 20% off. Use the code CPP20. Link in the description of the podcast. Thank you, Chad. Once again, can't wait to see you live in 2023. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching us into the Card Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin. And you guys know how I end every single one. This is a big, healthy, and hearty. See you.